Hi guys, I'd hoped I'd be able to show you a freshly painted and installed engine here aboard the boat this weekend, but uh, sadly that's not gonna happen. There is some good news though. On Tuesday I'm going back in the water, and that's good news because it's a lot more comfortable being aboard the boat while it's in the water, and I get to bring Jökul back aboard the boat. But before Obelix is ready to go back in the water, there are two things I need to take care of. The most important thing is to put the prop back on, but I also need to apply the last coat of epoxy primer to this and some bottom paint. Here are all the parts of my folding prop. This will be my first time ever putting this back together, so uh, let's hope I get this right. I better just check that everything still fits. I've been told that it's a good idea to go ahead and heat this so that once it cools it gets a better grip on the prop shaft, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. This has had a chance to cool down now, so let's go ahead and put in this nut. Now that this bolt has been tightened, let's go ahead and tighten this. Ta-da! I'm 99% sure this isn't gonna go flying as soon as I switch on the engine, but uh, I guess we'll figure that out. I certainly hope not, these props are ridiculously expensive. You guys might have seen this earlier in the video, this is what's gonna turn out to be my brand new holding tank. This is 9mm plywood and uh, I've already gone ahead and made some fillets. I'm gonna line this with fiberglass and that's not really required because uh, a few layers of epoxy should seal this up nicely, but I really like the idea of having that fiberglass in there. So, oh! Thanks to some technical difficulties, what you just saw is the only video I've got from yesterday and that's not really enough to merit its own separate video. So what I'm gonna do is I'll throw the stuff from yesterday in with the stuff I'm gonna film today and hopefully all of that will combine into a sort of okay video. Let's start by getting you guys caught up on what I did yesterday. I lined the bottom of the holding tank with fiberglass and I reinforced the corners with some fiberglass too. I then applied a single coat of epoxy to the inside of the holding tank. The goal here is to end up with about half a millimeter or 20 mils of epoxy covering the entire inside of the holding tank. That's the same thickness you'd use as a barrier coat on the outside of the hull. Here you can see the fiberglass I used to reinforce the corners and you might also be able to see the tiny fillet down here. I'll have to trim this later on today but we'll get back to the holding tank in just a few minutes. You guys saw me put on the prop yesterday and it's still on there so uh, that's a good sign. I also managed to apply the last coat of two part epoxy primer to this and a coat of bottom paint. And that means Obelix is ready to go back into the water, so yay! Now there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's the engine bay, so let's go have a look. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'd hoped I'd be able to show you a freshly painted engine, but at least I can show you a freshly painted engine bay. The end result isn't perfect, but it's certainly a step up. As you might be able to tell, I've got a few runners right here, and that's because the top coat wasn't really all that easy to work with, so that's why I'm not completely satisfied. But uh, hey, once the engine is stalled, you won't notice this. This is the bracket for the diesel filter. It mounts somewhere around here, and the diesel pump of course is hanging out up there. I'll paint this the same white as the rest of the engine bay, I think that'll look really nice. I've put back the uh, aft end of the encapsulation that sits around the engine and uh, in contrast to the freshly painted engine bay that looks pretty grimy. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, order some new sound insulation material for this. The stuff that's on there now is just raw foam and the new stuff is gonna be covered in aluminum foil and that's gonna make the engine bay look like a million bucks. I think that sums up what I did yesterday. And now that the uh, holding tank is solid solid as a rock. <laughs> I can go ahead and remove the screws I used to just hold everything together until the epoxy cured. Removing these screws will make the end result look a lot better and uh, the holding tank will still be rock solid. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this for the next coat of epoxy. I've cleaned the inside of the holding tank so I'm ready to apply the next coat of epoxy and uh, I'm gonna mix that up in this. Of course, this doesn't look as if it's a good choice for mixing up epoxy. It's got lots of old paint on it, right? 
But I want to show you something, and it's something that's oddly fulfilling because this old two-part epoxy primer it just it peels off. I have no idea why it feels so fulfilling to be able to just pull that old paint out of there, but it does. Let's go ahead and mix up some epoxy. I'll do six pumps of resin and five pumps of hardener, and uh, I'll get back to why in the end of this video. The holding tank is curing up on deck. Now I doubt I'll be able to apply a second coat today, but I'll check later today just to make sure. I think it's about time I do something really boring, a bit of housekeeping, because the boat is a complete mess. Yikes. Go. Things are starting to shape up. Now I just need to figure out where to put all of this stuff. I'm gonna head up to my storage unit to drop off a load of stuff and uh, when I get back to the boat I want to show you guys the inside of the boat. I think I've made some decent progress. I would really love to be able to get rid of this storage unit. It's not free, but for now I think I'll keep it. Ta-da! It might not look like a lot has happened, but uh, for the first time since I moved aboard the boat I've been able to clear out the starboard side bunk. I've sorted through all of my stuff and I was able to get rid of a few garbage bags worth of stuff and that's always a good feeling. I think the boat is just about ready for Jökul to move back aboard. But before the boat is ready to go back in the water, there are still a few things I need to take care of. The first thing is super quick, it's just a matter of turning off the raw water intake for the engine. There we go. Of course I needed to turn off that seacock because there isn't an engine connected to the other end of that hose. But while I have access to this area I might as well go ahead and measure the size of the hose. Which turns out to be 16 millimeters. Obelix doesn't have a raw water filter on the intake for the engine. Which is silly because I've had this thing lying around for over a year just waiting for me to mount it. But uh, I need to order some new hose to be able to mount this somewhere where it makes sense to have it. And you might be wondering why I'm doing this now. Well, all of this would be really nice to have done before I winterized the engine. The second thing is to hook up the bilge pump. Now it's not really something I absolutely need to do, but uh, my stern gland might let a little bit of water seep in because the engine isn't there to support the weight of the shaft. So I'd like to have the automatic bilge pump hooked up so that if some water gets in the boat, it's going to be pumped out automatically. I've already connected the hose to the bilge pump and I've cleaned up most of the yucky stuff in this part of the bilge from when we pulled the engine. All I need to do now is to hook the bilge pump up to some power. I'm not going to show you guys how I wired that bilge pump and that's on purpose because I didn't have all of the materials I'll need. I didn't have enough conduit and I didn't have enough proper gauge wire to run three wires to the bilge pump. I only had enough to run two wires. So right now the bilge pump is stuck in either off or automatic. So I'll have to redo the wiring in a few weeks once I have everything I need. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, see if it works. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and call that a big fat success. It takes about 3 liters of water to activate the bilge pump and once it does and it's done pumping out all the water it can, there's about a centimeter water left in the bilge and I think that's perfectly okay. I promised you a little earlier in this video an explanation as to why I was using 6 pumps of uh, resin to 5 pumps of hardener. And uh, now normally you'd always go one to one, but apparently tank building, whether it be holding tanks or diesel tanks or freshwater tanks, are the one exception. In tank building you actually want a slightly resin rich mixture. There's an excellent guide for this over at West Systems website and there's a link for that guide down in the description. I don't know what I've done to my back, but it's starting to act up, so uh, I'm gonna stop this video here. So. I guess that's it for this video guys. See you! Yerkul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. To be notified about new content please click subscribe. If you're new to the channel I suggest you check out the introduction playlist. If you've enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment.